Welcome once again. This is Literary Goa, the program about books and people involved with books. And today with me, I have a guest with whom I have actually one big quarrel and that quarrel is they do excellent work. Sujata smiling. They do excellent work, but they don't tom tom about it. And it's one of Goa's best kept secrets. Sujata Norona, no relation of mine, from the Bookworm Library in Panjim. Sujata, tell us about the Bookworm Dream. Hi, Frederick, and thank you for inviting me. Uh, the Bookworm Dream began very small, Frederick, as you know. It was really just to provide a space for young children to come access good quality books and know that this is possible, that, you know, you can find a space where you can read and borrow books. And, and you were telling me two minutes back that you're surprised that it survived 17 years. It's my own personal uh, surprise <laughs> that in, in face of, you know, just so many changes in the world, we're still doing what we started to do 17 years back. People have, you know, moved in, moved out. But the core, the essence of what Bookworm uh, was envisioned about s continues to stay strong. So I'm more and more thinking that there was a time I thought Bookworm was me and I was Bookworm, but actually I think that entity it's has outgrown you. Yes, and it's beautiful to know that it can also thrive and take form, not necessarily on my spirit alone. In case, in case we are jumping ahead of the story, I want to say one thing. So mm. Bookworm is this excellent library, which is a children's library. And it has tons of books for children. And, you know, I grew up in the 70s, always wondering why we couldn't get enough books for right. youngsters in Goa. But Bookworm has a wide range of books from all over the place. So I first encountered it when it was at Santines, then it moved to Taligao, and now it is at Mala Fontanes. It has branches and initiatives elsewhere. Give us a sense of how the project has grown. So you captured it so beautifully again, Frederick. It started as this small library space. I think the next big move was we began an outreach program. We had a red van, which a friend helped me buy. And we began to take books to children who couldn't come into Panjim City, and particularly children from uh, marginalized communities where their parents don't have time to invest in a trip into Panjim City or the idea of reading or story joy. And it grew from the outreach work into our need to then locate bookworm resources even in small schools that didn't have, uh, you know, library access or even the idea at the time that young children can have books before they learn to read. Uh, you know, now it's commonly accepted understanding, but even 15 years back that was uh, fresh even to teachers that you don't wait to read and then you know, go to the library. The library is one of the reasons you'll become a reader. So the access to books being critical was how that project grew. This year, uh, you know, we are really delighted to say we have uh, three standalone little libraries. Besides, besides Fontanes? Besides no, Mala. counting, counting Mala, Mala, we have a little library in the village of Kakra, which is one of our oldest communities we began to work with. This is, is at very, the foot uh, of very, the Bambuli. Very kind of the not so affluent community. Yes, it was a small fishing village who are now getting surrounded by dream houses <laughs> that overlook the sea. But the village hamlet still remains and we have a little library in that village, which is now over nine years old. Uh, and it's used by the children. In fact, some of our older children ran it during lockdown. Uh, it's one of our small sustainable projects. And uh, we began a library in Aldona with support from Dr. Mrs. Aurora Koto through a fund yeah. called the Alban, and now it's called the Alban and Aurora Koto Corpus. Yeah. And uh, that's also been a project of joy where the community has responded so positively. Uh, we've moved into the Aldona Institute in partnership with the Aldona Institute, which I think is really ensuring the sustainability of this idea. The more the collaborations, the stronger for me it will be. And we're really um, excited to announce a new library space that will open in Saligao, your village, uh, with the, you know, kindness and generosity of uh, Jean and Vinay Kalgutkar, who've uh, offered us their old uh, home to turn it into whatever we wanted. So we are opening it out as a community center and a library. Uh, and we are excited, as you can imagine. 
you also took your books to schools like i mm. remember giri mm. monte giri and uh, yeah, chimbel still, and yeah this year we our goal was 100 schools and we are actually supporting 100 schools really? in goa yeah 67 of these schools are government primary schools in tiswadi and uh, ponda taluka and the others are all aided schools. So that means you take the books there? We take, yeah, before lockdown, we would actually tell stories in the classroom. But during these two years, we've used it to train teachers. So we've actually used that opportunity to get in touch with teachers. Course multiply. Yeah, and we've really, now we have a core group of teachers in the government system and in the aided system who have become part of Bookworm training programs. Actually, I saw these high energy trainings you all were doing. I, I remember once going to Giri with you all to photograph the place. Some and interesting. We've seen what happens when you invest in even teachers and adults to shift their way of thinking about books. It's just this passive leisure material to actually uh, really a medium that can transform some conversation, shift me on the inside, allow me to cope with what's happening outside by the act of reading. So this year, a num large number of teachers are supporting the program in their own schools. And our team has a schedule to every three weeks visit and do some interaction. Um, How does a school get in touch with you all if they are interested? Just email. Okay, which uh, is? Which is uh, mail at bookwormgoa.in. That's all. Uh, and we're very happy we'll reach out, come and visit and then see how we can support. But to go back to the beginning, how did the uh, bookworm start? Uh, where did the idea first germinate? Mm -hmm. Whose baby was it? I know Elaine and others were involved. Yes. It's wonderful to have hindsight, right? And to look back and think. At the time, I didn't think it would be what it was. But it came largely from two big experiences. One is meeting children at the Nirmala Institute of Education where I worked, uh, meeting young children whose parents had this desire that they become literate in English and quickly to get admission into primary schools. And the struggle with this act of reading, writing, listening, comprehension, and stories are the most powerful way to strength in language. Because a lot of people complain that students uh, are not able to read in that sense. Yes. Like. yes. And it almost at one point was becoming the filter by which you didn't have opportunity to go to certain schools if you didn't have those skills, which many of us with, you know, social, cultural, intellectual capital, it happens quite automatically. So that point for me was defining to think how can a library support children. And with uh, you know, the lovely management at the time at the Nirmala Institute, I got permission to start a small library for preschool children. This is, uh, this this is 2003-2004. And so in the small kindergarten, we ran a library and Elaine was with me in the kindergarten. So we were both there. And so that was our pilot. And the kind of responses we saw from children and parents stayed with me very strongly. So when I moved out of that project, uh, I, you know, it was a very strong feeling that this is a good thing to do. Uh, and that's how, you know, we began Bookworm. Mm -hmm. We thought it would be an evening project, you know. <laughs> yeah, part time, <laughs> yes. a few hours a day. Yes. But then it grows uh, it on became you. A, it's become a yeah, lifelong project. And then I took myself back to college. I didn't come with background in education. Uh, I came with a background in management and some uh, understanding of early childhood care. But uh, then I studied more and I've specialized in this idea of literacy. What is really literacy in its most expanded form? Not just literacy as a skill, but literacy as a way to think about things, to critically, you know, engage with ideas. And it's a deep interest for me, even a kind of academic interest. And I have found resonance of that interest in the library, which is just magical. Uh, the way I myself look at books uh, and use books is a part of this whole journey of amazing all these years. And well. how it's grown is also very, uh, I think, you know, unlike people like me who are very chaotic in our approach, you all are very systematic. And while I jokingly criticize you all for not being publicity oriented, which might be a good thing also, but <laughs> may not be. 
uh, you all also have got a structure in place so you all have grown to a large number of uh, you know staff volunteers employees how many are there now today yeah so one shift that happened which i feel important to share is from a uh, a small you know informal kind of partnership we registered bookworm as a trust and so we have a really uh, gentle and uh, ever present group of four trustees who guide our work now this registration as a charitable trust afforded us the opportunity to apply for funding and grants and that has strengthened our team because now we can also? pay uh, wipro foundation is wipro. one of our big partners sipla foundation is our longest oldest partner with the school work they're yeah. very proud. many of these indian corporates can actually do good work if they have a vision and 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 i think it's up to us also to keep honoring those partnerships yeah. you know that by doing good work which yeah. which is that it's just something in the dna of bookworm put your head down and just keep doing it yeah. uh, so that has helped helped us grow so uh, we right now have a team of full time team of i think 14 team members yeah and couple of people who give us consultancy it's an amazing yeah. success story because uh, you know i mean we may uh, goa may not be have may have not woken up much to its potential but whoever has got involved with it really understands how useful it is like i remember when my kids were tiny uh, we are of course about 10 kilometers from you all so you all had a scheme which actually fitted in very well where we could pay some 6 or 700 rupees a month take and take a box and take a box of books 15 or so books and return them even every two days and you know without yeah. paying anything more keep on yeah. renewing them so it it yeah. worked fantastically like you know in that sense and it's fascinating because we we're not very good with thinking of schemes in the financial sense yes or in the in the sense of you know a, a sustainable idea uh but it's wonderful even and this is something frederick i feel committed to saying that while we work at bookworm quite hard and drive the work i really believe there is a larger community whose support has kept bookworm alive it may not even be financial support it may sometimes not even be verbal support but they know we exist and, and they I, know you are doing something good yes and i believe very much that that's really what is a true community project you know so if i do write a mail i still remember once we wanted another vehicle because the outreach had you know grown, grown. and it i did something so not typical but so good in a way i sent a mail to 20 people saying if anyone has a car that's not being used you know for 3 yeah. months in the monsoon we need help a, a key was delivered a couple of days later yeah. by uh, yes by one of the younger zante family sons and we got a santro which we used for about 6 years until the car i i love stories like volunteering this. actually works and i think in the world of books people realize that you know you can't leave it to the market alone it's not going to happen and not the act of reading frederick which is not necessarily we are primed to do like talking and walking it requires a certain culture Yeah. around that. it's hard no, work it's hard it work is. till you get the results and unless see if you're if you're not into it you won't even understand why you should be doing it that's <laughs> that's also true so that is what i think we we somehow even children pick up you know that they are very excited about this so there must be something in it this is not articulated but you know at a subliminal level the fact that we like what we do comes up what were the high points in your project what gave you the greatest key? i children's responses till today frederick i feel i when i'm tired it's because that month i haven't interacted enough with children it's it's for me the most affirming they never cease to surprise never and even their their rejection of my ideas delight me because i'm provoked to think if the children say that this was completely boring right and i don't agree that this is a good thing that happened in the story it's that that provokes me to think more deeply to yeah. accommodate so i love that the other high point as i said before for me is the sense i have a sense that i'm supported and that i, I wouldn't have thought you know a decade so, back yeah so i used to feel uh, sometimes that this is i it's grown too big for me and when i realize that it's not just me it's more than me i feel a deep sense of uh, capability can people with a commitment to books also volunteer in your of place most welcome in fact for the evening outreach program where the 
two people go to different yeah. sites uh we always looking for people who will volunteer but our one because we are as you rightly said systematic and organized uh you know uh, we need a commitment so even okay. if it is in today i'll be there on at this time to honor that yeah. because those changes shift a lot of things and i want to share one latest highlight where a really another wonderful gentleman who has a house in saligao mr sanjeev kumar donated money for us to buy a new uh, van so we now have a winger that we've set up as a walk in library and it's going to 11 different sites uh, bastora moira mapsa uh, chimbel mercedes uh, and it's going to 12 schools across the river in kortalem zuari nagar verna Uh, with books yeah so this program kicked off in june and we are very proud of it what surprised you with your project did you find something that you didn't were not aware of did you find the school projects working or people reluctant initially to take them up i've never experienced uh, reluctance yes, yes. yeah never but um, you know somehow the logistic appears to confound school heads so it's like oh we'll have to make library period will your team come you know it's not yeah. the idea okay it's the administrative bits of you know rescheduling uh, i feel become deterrents with communities there's never been a uh, shortage yes but we our biggest threat or competition is interestingly the tuition classes so we work in sunlight as no we cannot run the library right. outreach because they are often informal right. settings after the sun has set yeah. even the team has to go home yeah. and it we are finding tuition hours are becoming longer and longer 10 years back children were out of tuition by 334 now they are out of tuition by 6 okay. quarter to 6 so the library gets marginalized they sometimes pass you know and wave a hand long <laughs> that that they can't come today uh and we recognize that somehow we've not shifted this idea that even the library is a way to improve your learning True. you know it may a not be direct way, a very yeah. powerful way because you know what world it opens we never know no yes how many of us are creations of what we read absolutely so that kind of uh, that i feel is something we have to work harder on you know more talking to parents more um, demonstrating that this kind of what looks like leisure reading is actually powerful learning which actually will feed scholastic learning i have no doubts about true, that true. but you know it doesn't have this beautiful immediate fit like perhaps a tuition class has like you learn this table pass yeah, the test yeah. it doesn't have that right. so somehow i feel that's an area to work so that has been a struggle attendance drops during right. assessment times and everything but maybe it's my personality but i often can only think of wonderful things <laughs> to shift gear somewhat what's your take on the state of libraries in goa where are we doing less what could, what do we need to do hmm. we you know fascinatingly we have an amazing network of libraries when you look at you know the the libraries that the art and department of art and culture supporting at the village level and we did this noy project this river project working with 13 of these little libraries the network exists what it desperately needs i feel is a rejuvenation you know a revival for want of a better word many of them the newspaper to some extent is still the only fresh uh, text that reaches them it's managed because it was started and it has to manage and there's a drip feed of some resource that goes every month towards paying somebody but it doesn't have a life and a the look at the way the world is changed right libraries have to actually keep pace uh, in fact sr ranganathan who had those five laws yeah. one is that the library is a responsive organism i love those two words responsive and organism because there is the act of life in that right so it can't be set up left and just kept and most of these libraries don't have children's collections and i believe very strongly the revival is linked to children's experiences so that they grow into adults 
who've had library experiences and therefore that's how it will perpetuate. Uh, so that would be, you know, I don't know how we've tried in the past uh, when, uh, you know, our beloved Carlos was uh, in the central library. He had also that vision to do trainings with some of these networked libraries. It requires an energy from within the system and then there will be resources, as you know, of people outside who will want to hold hands with the system. So really, that's how I think about it. Interesting. Any any particular models that have worked for you or you think can work like, you know, I, I notice you all were doing work with Donald Fernandez of Street Providence with this yes. book, booth. Yes. Where you take any book and you return, yes. keep it there. So Aldona also yeah. has this little open library. We call it a bookstop. The Panjim Garden used to yeah. have have it as well. Uh, Which is quite a, a evolved idea. No? Here you are saying that we are keeping books for you. Come and take them for free. Yeah. If you feel like return them or replace them with something yeah. else. Yes. The amazing thing about the Aldona bookstop, which is now maybe seven years old, we've never run out of books. So my my perhaps my faith in the goodness of yeah you know it becomes just, a self fulfilling prophecy yeah yeah it works, it works. I think it, it will have blips it will have uh, some challenges yeah. but if you keep your eye on the end purpose yeah. that this is a cultural shift I'm asking of a community right yeah. and it's based on trust this really nebulous thing that we're all becoming more suspicious than more yeah. <laughs> trusting. Somehow it resonates with some people yeah. and it, it it's counterintuitive but it works. Even at the Saligao Institute, we started this thing where we accept donations of old books and we okay. sell them at a very, very cheap rate, 20, 30, 40 rupees a book. So, like you know, it actually acts as a as a pseudo library in that Correct. sense. And it because and people I'm we are getting so much that is so lovely. We should yeah. come and buy. No, 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 you can even take some of them. So But of course, children's books are always in demand, I they think. Are. They are. And that is what affirms our vision, Frederick, that irrespective of what is happening, uh, I feel everybody wants to repose faith that children should have the best chance at succeeding in life. So in during the lockdown, we started a home delivery in Panjim. I got this idea from this Swiggy people who go around on bikes. So we have a bike in Bookworm. And so we began a home delivery to homes, but within a radius of Panjim. Unfortunately, that is something we're hoping these other centers will change, you know, that we can have now mm. radii out of Saliga, out of Aldona is already happening and move to more places because we've been too Panjim centric and that's accidental, not, not in any way deliberate. But the home delivery worked so magically mm. where uh, the, when we began to put little surprises into the bag with books because children's lives were so locked down, no? Right. And now they come to the library and their mum will say, this is the place from where we got those books. This is where you got the crossword from. And I feel a different relationship is forming because we reached out. It wasn't a big thing to do. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah. but it was lovely. You yeah. grew up in Vasco. I grew up at the port, so the Murmugao Harbour. Okay. And uh, I, I, part of my belief in libraries comes from the fact that being a child of the harbour master in the port. You had excellent libraries? We had one library, but it was excellent. Really? Yes. And made a difference to your... It's, we were isolated. We lived at a headland right. with, you know, just two other houses next to us. So a rather isolated uh, existence. existence in the, like I was born in the 70s. So you can imagine what the headland looked like is nothing like what it looks like now. Yeah. The Potras didn't have this idea of colonies and housing, which is now yeah. all offered. So few families, but there were workers in the port who came on the trains then. The train came right up to the harbour. So, the, you know, the clerical and the other staff travelled by train to the harbour. They walked 20 steps to the main office. But that library was set up by whichever chairman for them and their families. That kind of vision has always struck me. Wow. Yeah, and we were one of the few children who were actually directly accessing because we lived in the port area. Many families didn't. Yeah, uh, yeah so I, I've had a precious relationship with uh, libraries. And there's another story that very few people in Goa have had this experience. Uh, there used to be, uh, you, you know a lot about the 
yeah. Russian children's literature, yeah. right? There used to be a ship called Doulos that yeah. would sail, uh, you know, seas, the yeah. seas. And my father was the harbor master. And okay. for two trips, he uh, invited that ship to park at the port. 77, 78? Yes, yes. Uh, before that, I think I 74, Sorry. 75, uh, the ship, I, I still remember walking the plank, going in and just spending the whole day reading on a ship with books. Fundamentally powerful experiences, okay. which is why I believe all children need powerful library experiences, because that's what becomes the seeds now of who you become as a human being. Amazing. Yeah, so these are my two big library stories. My, my story was very different. I always uh, remember going to this bookshop in Mapsa and asking him that Burgian kine book ailya. So he would say, na yes, umanan yung na not this week, come Correct. next week. And it never came. Like So that was my biggest regret in life. But we did get a lot of books by these uh, returning African kids, right. you know, in the 70s and things yes. like that. So, so, I mean, books can shape your life and I'm so happy that you're living this uh, this saying in such an important way, Sujata. I again want to appreciate all that you've done and, uh, you know, maybe uh, hoping to see you take it to even higher level so that we have a state which is filled with libraries and yes. can be replicated and stand on its own feet. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.